So good morning and welcome to Unity Spiritual Center Denver to our virtual service. Wherever you are in the world, we are so glad that you chose to spend part of your day with us. Whether you are joining us on Sunday morning or sometime later in the week, we are blessed by your energy and your presence and we thank you for being a part of our community. And I want you to know that Unity Spiritual Center Denver is a loving, welcoming, inclusive community and we welcome you to be a part of our community, whoever you are and wherever you are on your spiritual journey. We're so glad that you joined us today. And so now I invite you to join me as we say our creed, and it is, our God is love, our race is human, our faith is oneness. And I have a reading I wanna share with you this morning, and it comes from Wayne Muller's book, a life of being, having, and doing enough. I just want to say, if you're not familiar yet with Wayne Muller, I highly recommend anything that he has written. He wrote the book Sabbath, uh, which is a beautiful book, and uh, a lo um, How Then Shall We Live is another one of his books. All of his writing, to me, is just beautifully poetic and uh, touching. And so this one, I'm not going to read the entire piece, but it's, it's entitled A Hidden Wholeness. Thomas Merton, the gifted Trappist monk, wrote in A Book of Hours, There is in all visible things an invisible fecundity, a hidden wholeness. Merton repeatedly insisted that all beings carry within them this undeniable hidden wholeness, a deep and luminous, quote, fount of inexhaustible sweetness and purity, end quote. Most importantly, this inner perfection, or as Merton sees it, this divine nature, is a quality so deeply embedded in us, so fundamentally strong, that it cannot be tarnished by our suffering diminished by our fears, or fractured by our tragedies. In short, it is a part of our soul that, unlike our bodies or hearts, does not break. Jesus also said, you are the light of the world. Simply because you are alive on the earth, a vital child of creation, born of dust and spirit, you are the light of the world. The Buddha also taught that we have within us this very same wholeness, 
what he called an innate natural perfection. The God of the Hebrews declared that the most essential truths of life and spirit were inscribed on their very hearts. And the prophet Elijah demonstrated that we carry an intuitive inner knowing, a still small voice of the divine in the quiet recesses of our soul. Many Native Americans speak of some manifestation of the great spirit who infuses all beings with this same vitally sacred life force. For Hindus, the Atman, or soul of the world, is everywhere in all beings, all things. Many of us, when we read words like this, easily dismiss them as spiritual platitudes. We have heard all this holy talk before, and however inspirational it, inspirational it may sound, it just doesn't ring true for us. It doesn't feel accurate and cannot possibly apply to the person I know myself to be. What if we actually believed that this hidden wholeness were really true? What if, as an experiment, if only for one day, we lived as if we believed that there lived in us some reliable strength, wisdom, and wholeness? What if we were to pretend that regardless of our health or mood or fortunes or circumstances, we could remain quietly wise, accurate and trustworthy in our judgments and actions. Even more, what if we could actually feel, sense, and know with unshakable certainty that wherever we went, into whatever company or situation we were called, we would carry with us always this capacity to move with confidence and trust into any situation? How would we think? act, choose? How would we respond differently to the world during such a day? So I invite you to ponder that for yourself. What if you really, truly believed that there is that hidden wholeness, that inner divinity that you are? How would you approach your life differently? How would you respond to conditions in the world? How would you choose to show up? And so I invite you now to join Robert Anderson. We have Robert Anderson with us this morning to join with him in singing Surely the Presence as we lead into a time of prayer. I can feel the mighty power and the grace. There's a holy hush around us. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of love is in So I invite you, if you're in a place where it's comfortable to do so, to close your eyes. We close our outer eyes as we open ourselves to that inner vision, the inner vision that sees the truth of us, the inner vision, the eyes that see the Christ, the true light, our own divinity right here and right now radiating in every aspect of our being. We close our eyes to the outer and we open our eyes to the inner world of that light that is living itself in you and in me and in all creation. It is the same light that lived and moved and has its life in and through the one we know as Jesus. It is that same light that we often call the Christ that we in this time 
a reawaken to. We reawaken to that light that is living us. We reawaken to that light that is so present. We open ourselves to the expectancy of the light that we are here to give birth to. Our own inner divinity. And in this moment, we allow ourselves to claim it, to own it, to be that light right here, right now, and to allow ourselves to remember who we truly are. As we claim it, as we allow it, as we, as we declare that truth for ourselves, we also know that truth for each other. And in that truth, we know our unity, our oneness with all creation. And in that, we are lifted up. Our energy is lifted into the awareness of that true light and life. And together, we hold all of those who are on our hearts and minds today who might be experiencing some imbalance, some disruption, some life situation that might be challenging for them. And we know that the truth is unaffected by any of that. The inner light, the inner wholeness, the divinity is not affected. And we know that truth, that that is the ultimate reality of each and every one of us. And in that truth, in that awareness, we are whole, we are complete, we are perfect in the light and as the light of the divine. As we claim it, as we allow it, we know that it is so. As we allow it to be, it becomes. And so it is. Amen. <laughs> Shortest day, longest night So we burn the candles bright Stars in heaven guide our sight Till light returns again Sometimes I'm blind, I cannot see My life as it is meant to be that's when I let faith carry me Till light returns again And so it is since time began There's always been a perfect plan It took a while to understand The light and dark within us Longest night, though we burn the candles bright, all is well and we're all right till light returns again, till light returns again. Thank you, Robert. Robert Anderson, back with us today. Thank you, Robert. It's always great to have you with us. And I know you all are 
glad that Robert's with us today. He's always one of our favorites. So thank you for being here, Robert. You know, this time of year, as we enter into the Christmas season, uh, the Advent season, I always get the opportunity to revisit the Christmas story as we have it in the Bible. And every year, it reveals something different to me, something new and, and um, inspiring, and something new for me to learn about myself. You know, in Unity, we look at the Bible, we look at Scripture in many different ways. We all obviously look at it as a history of a people. Uh, we look at it metaphorically and metaphysically, meaning that in unity, we look at all of the people in the, the Bible, all of the places in the Bible as some aspect of ourselves, some aspect of what's happening within us, in our consciousness. And we also look at the Bible myutically, which means that we explore the stories from where we are right now what's going on in our lives at this very moment, and what we can glean from those stories to apply to our lives. And it's always interesting and um, amazing to me that I can find something in the Christmas story, uh, a new thing every year. And so today I wanna to share a little bit with you about what has come up for me this year around the story. And today I'm calling this message, The Journey to Bethlehem. Bethlehem, as many of us know, is the place where Jesus was born. And metaphysically, uh, we understand Bethlehem to be a place in consciousness. A place that really is no place, right? But is a state of consciousness. And we understand Bethlehem from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary to, to be a place in our own consciousness where that divinity that, that Merton talked about, that hidden wholeness or that divinity, comes into form, comes into realization. And the birth of the one that we know as Jesus the Christ is a representation of that for us. Jesus, as we understand, was completely human and completely divine. And he lived, as we understand it, a life in which he allowed that inner light, that hidden wholeness, to be revealed through his humanity. And that's our potential as well. To truly connect with that divine light, the Christ light, the hidden wholeness that each of us is, and to allow that to be given life through us. Now, sometimes when we think about that, we may think, well, I, I have to be superhuman, or I have to somehow be uh, perfect in my humanness, or I'm not doing that. I know that I've, I've thought that too. But what I'm really realizing and recognizing more is that we are all on this journey this journey to Bethlehem, this journey of allowing that divinity to live through us and to reveal itself through our humanity. It's not about giving up our humanity or thinking that we have to be, do it perfectly. It's a journey and it really is, I believe, a lifelong journey that we're all on. And it's a moment by moment journey. It's a daily journey. You know, sometimes we do it really well. And sometimes maybe we are not so uh, aligned with that divinity. 
And so as I look at the story, the Christmas story, and all of the people, you know, we have this beautiful uh, nativity scene here on our platform that we have every year. But when I look at this, and I think all of these people made the journey to Bethlehem in the story. And what do they represent for us? What is it required of me and of you to truly make this journey of claiming our divinity and allowing our divinity to live through our humanity, knowing that we too are fully human and we are fully divine, just like Jesus. And our opportunity is to merge the two as much as we possibly can. And so I look at Mary, who made this journey to Bethlehem. And in the story, you know, Mary is a young woman called a virgin in the story. And the angel Gabriel comes to her and says, you're going to have God's child. And at first, you know, Mary was a little bit confused by that. But she was open and willing to believe. To believe that that was possible. She never said, well, how is that going to happen? She really said, in the story at least, she said, be it done unto me. I don't really know how it's going to happen but I'm willing to believe. And so for us to make the journey to Bethlehem, it's important for us to first be open and willing to believe that it's possible. You know, I grew up in a very traditional Christian uh, denomination. And if, if I said to someone who's still in that denomination, you are, you are divine, you are completely human, you are completely divine, just like Jesus was, they would think that was blasphemy. And I, I, when I first got into new thought and began hearing that, I was a little bit resistant to that. How can that be? Isn't Jesus the only one who is divine? And so our humanness can come up for us when we think, well, can I really be divine? I'm guessing that many of you have thought the same thing from time to time. Me? You don't really know who I am. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. And so it's important for us to be able to accept that, to, to see, yes, I can believe that. I can believe in the possibility of that. And I think that's one of our first steps in really making that journey to Bethlehem where we allow that divinity, open to that divinity, and be, allow that to have its expression through us. Yes, we're human. We doubt. And I don't think it's just a one-time thing to say, oh, well, I believe it now. It may be. But I know in my journey to Bethlehem, I still have those doubts. I still think, well, am I really worthy of that? Can that really be true for me? And that's okay. It's okay for us to be human. And it's so important for us to come back to that place of being open and to believe, to believe. It's possible. And then there's Joseph, who made that journey to Bethlehem as well. And for me this year, Joseph represents courage. That it takes courage for us to make that journey, to truly begin to understand ourselves as divine in our humanness. Remember in the story, when uh, Mary told Joseph that she was going to have the baby and Joseph and Mary had not known each other in the biblical sense. So he was confused and he was going to put her away. 
Why was he going to put her away? Well, you know, in that culture, in that society, it was, it was um, she would been, they would have been outcast. Well, what goes on in Joseph when he's resisting making this journey to Bethlehem? I see that in me, it's that idea of, well, if I do this, if I do this, am I still going to belong to the family that I have always been a part of, whether that's my, my birth family or whether that's my friends or whatever might be holding me in that humanness? Well, if I do this, if I really claim this, if I really make this journey to Bethlehem, am I going to be rejected? Am I going to be abandoned? Am I going to be laughed at? You know? And that's what the mind does. The mind will try to confuse us and try to, to make us believe that if we follow that journey to Bethlehem, if we really claim who we are, that somehow we're going to be alone and outcast and, or whatever. And that's what the mind does, and that's okay. That's part of our humanness. But then Joseph, again, he's... He's visited by the angel. And what is the angel? The same thing with Mary. It's that aspect of us that knows, that light within us, the still small voice that we often talk about that's represented by these angels that speak to us in the stillness and the quiet. You know, Joseph had to go to sleep <laughs> and dream this. And what that reveals to me is that while in our humanness, we often get up in our heads. I'm not worthy, as I was talking about with Mary, or am I going to be rejected, as I'm talking about with Joseph. But when we really allow ourselves to go into our hearts and listen to that still, small voice, that still, small voice speaks to us of love. It will never speak to us of fear. It will never stimulate fear within us. Fear not, says the angel, that voice within us. Fear not. And so as I thought about that, I, I thought about Joseph and courage to me is, is living uh, from your whole heart. I think it was Brene Brown that talked about courage is living from your whole heart, living the truth that you know even if people criticize you, even if people reject you, even if your family rejects you, right? You know, it's so funny how we in our humanness can have one person that criticizes us, that talks trash about us, and a hundred people that support us and love us. But who are we going to give the most energy to? Who are we going to think the most about? Most of us will think most about the person who criticizes us. We're going to give them a lot of energy. Why is that? That's our humanness. That's our humanness. And so it's important to recognize that. But to keep coming back to the heart. Keep coming back to that place that's guiding us to Bethlehem. Where we truly can claim our own divinity. We are, as I said, and I will keep saying, fully human, and we're fully divine. And then we have the wise men who made that journey from afar, you know, way off in the east, which we probably would know now as Iran or Iraq or somewhere in the east. They were probably Zoroastrian. Um, they were probably, some say they're astronomers you know, who are always watching the sky and always wondering what was going on. And so, for me, they represent that, that spirit of wonder and curiosity that is so important for us. Wonder, ah, I wonder what it would be like. I wonder, as you know, in the reading I shared earlier, to spend a day, what would, how would that be? What would it be like? If I really made that journey to Bethlehem, if I really understood my own divinity. But our minds 
get so wrapped up in worry. You know, I can imagine the wise men in their humanness as, as astronomers maybe looking up and seeing this star that doesn't move. And they may say, well, what the heck is that? Why would I want to follow that? That's a long journey. Why would I ever want to do that? I don't know what's out there. I don't know what's on the road to Bethlehem. I don't know what I might encounter. That's how the way our minds work. Maybe I'll just stay home. Maybe I don't want to make that journey. Ugh, I just can I can just thinking about it makes me tired and weary. I can imagine in their humanness, they may have had some of those thoughts. But as they gaze upon the star, again, a star in metaphysically represents that inner knowing. It says, yes, go here. That inner knowing, the heart of us says, wow, what an adventure. What an amazing adventure I'm going to have. I wonder what I will encounter. I wonder what will be revealed to me. And so as I make this journey, I'm going to take all of my riches, all of my good, all that of my gifts and talents, all that I have to give and share, and I'm going to take that with me on this journey. So that as I encounter my own divinity, I can give from that divinity. I can acknowledge that divinity with my own gifts and talents, and I can share that with others. So yeah, we're human. We worry, we fear, we wonder what that's gonna be like. We, we, we worry about that, but the divinity says, come on, this is an adventure of a lifetime, and this is a journey of a lifetime. And then we have the shepherd. As I thought about the shepherd this week, what might he might represent in my humanity, in your humanity? You know, the shepherd's out in the field tending the flock, tending the sheep. And then the angel appears, you know, and says, Be, you know, fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. And you know, a shepherd is one who is a caretaker, one who cares for the sheep, one who protects the sheep, one who is compassionate. You know, if, if one sheep strays away, then the shepherd will go and find that one sheep. And so our journey to Bethlehem, as we recognize that a shepherd within us, is about caring for ourselves on the journey, having compassion for ourselves as we are on this journey. Again, not beating ourselves up when we get into those, the fear or the, the mental chatter or the doubt. When we get into that place, we can call upon that compassion, the care of the shepherd boy or girl, <laughs> the shepherd within us, to say, come back. I love you. I care for you. And to respect where we are on the journey, wherever we are on the journey, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay for us to be wherever we are at any particular moment, any particular time, to give ourselves some understanding and to know that we are on this journey. We're on this journey to discover who we really are, that hidden wholeness, that divine light, as we in unity call it, the Christ, as represented by this innocent baby who came to teach us this very thing 
who came to example for us through the one we know as Jesus of Nazareth, one who said, I'm going to come forth. Yes, I know I'm human. Yes, I know I'm divine. And I'm going to do my best to embody that and to live that. And he was human. We see in the scripture he was human. He doubted. He worried. He was sad. He partied. He was human. And he was divine. And so as we think about that, as Jesus is as our example, we can embrace our humanity. And we can allow our humanity to reveal our divinity. And allow our divinity to be revealed through our humanity. But again, it's a journey. It's a lifelong journey for us, moment by moment. We get to make the choice. We get to make the decision. And, yeah, it's just not a place that we arrive at. You know, it's a journey without distance, as it says. I think that's what it says in A Course in Miracles. Without time, without distance. And so I just encourage you to remember that we're on a journey. We're on a journey. Just as all of these characters in the story made that journey, it requires our openness, our willingness, our courage, our sense of wonder and adventure. and a willingness to be compassionate and kind to ourselves along the journey. So, enjoy the journey. <laughs> I know that's easy for me to say, right? Enjoy the journey. It's not about the destination. And as we know, every moment, every moment is our opportunity to come back to Bethlehem, to that place in consciousness where we know our truth and we allow that truth to live in us, through us, as us. Thank you. Thank you for being with me this morning. Thank you for following this journey this morning. And so I invite you now to take a moment, close your eyes, Ah, take a breath. Ah, allow yourself to come into this now moment. Feel that breath, bringing your awareness deep into your heart. Deep into your heart. Where you hear that still, small voice, you may perceive it as an angel. You may see it as a star, a light. Know that it is always there. Always there. Guiding you to the unfolding of your highest potential. Know that it is always there, never judging you. Never damning you. <laughs> always supporting you, always encouraging you, always blessing you, wherever you are on the journey, calling to you, dear sweetheart, I'm here, I love you, I'm here to guide you, I'm here to protect you, I am the very essence of that which you are. And I'm here to make this journey with you. And so as we take just a short time in the silence, I invite you to be open to that voice. The still small voice that speaks to you of your truth, of your own divinity.
And as you breathe in, awaken to your own willingness, your own openness, your receptivity, your willingness to believe. Know that you are the essence of courage to live from that wholehearted connection with your divinity. Open and embrace your sense of wonder, curiosity, adventure. And always open to the compassionate voice of love. That is here, always present. Behold you in your humanity, wherever you are on your journey. Take a deep breath. Breathe all the way down through the bottom of your feet. Feel yourself grounded, supported by Mother Earth. Feel that energy rising to meet you. Feel yourself open to the energy of the Christed being that you are. And see yourself living your divinity right here and right now upon the earth. Ah. Everything is holy now Everything is holy now Everything's a miracle Cause everything is holy now Everything is holy now Everything is holy now Everything's a miracle Cause everything is holy now Everything's a miracle Everything is holy now. And now is the opportunity for you to share, give from your good, for to support the ministry here at Unity Spiritual Center Denver. There are many ways for you to do that, and on your screen you will see some of those options. We so appreciate your generosity of so many of you who continue to give from your heart, give from love, and we're so grateful for you. So I invite you now to say our offertory blessing with me. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am thankful. Days now are gone. Love and light shines 
you that every Wednesday during the Advent season that we will be offering something on Wednesday night on Facebook Live. Uh, Trish will be offering something this coming Wednesday and then I'll be offering something the following Wednesday and then Trish will offer something on the 23rd related to Advent and so we invite you to join us for that. It's going to be at 6 p.m. Uh, each Wednesday. So we invite you to join us for that. And so now I invite you to join me as we say our closing prayer. The light of God surrounds us, I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us, I am the love of God. The power of God protects us, I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us, I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and so it is. Now I invite you to join me as we sing our closing song, Love Can Move the World. Love can move the world As the moon in the sky moves the sea Love can cause the wars to cease Love can move this world to peace It's a tide that begins with you and me Love can move the world As the warmth of the sun moves the tree Feel the winds of love increase as we move this world to peace. Come love the world with me. Come love the world.